What's up, good people, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. Uh, Jamal and I were going to be reviewing the new film, The Wandering Earth 2, which is available now in select theaters as of January 22nd. Uh, because this is an international film, uh, you might want to call your local theaters just in case. It may not be showing out online, but it may be showing because this is a film you totally want to check out. Uh, after the success of the first film, which is available on Netflix. Uh, this is uh, certainly a no-brainer for you to want to see what they're going to bring back the second time. Um, I got a chance to check this out uh, digitally. Jamal got to see it in theaters, so we're going right. to definitely have a discussion about uh, the visuals in that, because if anything, if anything, for this damn near close three-hour movie, the visual spectacle that you're going to see is probably worth this entire review alone but yet the, the the price of your admission admission and we'll break that all down but yes this is the wandering earth 2 available now in select theaters uh also brought to you by the u.s distribution company in uh will will go usa uh which to me tells me that a digital release will be uh on the horizon very soon um and if not maybe it hits netflix uh also since the first one is available on netflix now with this being the second film the first question starts, do you need to see the first one? There's a very, very, very small margin of times that you see a, a sequel, because you say two, it's a sequel, right? That really, the, the second film isn't really the sequel. It's actually the prequel, so you technically don't need to see the first one first to enjoy this one. You actually can see the second one, second one first, then go back and watch the first one, and then it just makes it's more sense than it did the opposite way of watching it. Uh, Jamal, since you did watch it, uh, uh, shall I say out of order, but yeah, in order, uh, to talk to me about a little bit about the perspectives about that. So, yeah, they definitely went with a fast and furious, uh, you know, type of storytelling <laughs> here where the whole thing is sequentially out of order. Now, if you didn't see the 2019 uh, spectacle, The Wandering Earth, uh, basically, uh, the Earth, the sun is going to die uh, sooner than later. And uh, that's a problem because mm -hmm. you need that sun. So uh, let's uh, mosey on over to a new sun. Well, the closest thing to us in space is four and a half light years away. And oh, wait, and to be clear, because what's different about this is that typically when we have these world catastrophe or global apocalypse, we think, oh, where can we inhabit nests? In this case, they say, oh, no, we're going to take. Not only all our stuff, but our but our but our planet too, and we're right. getting out of here. <laughs> right, we're going to we we have gassed up the planet, uh, <laughs> yeah. and basically we're going to push this giant rock across the cosmos to the next best thing. Hopefully, thousands of years into the future. But what we do know now is that the sun uh, it's running out of gas, and that's a problem for everybody that wants to live. So bye bye solar system, bye bye sun. We got the mosey. And in the first movie, the big to do was, uh oh, Jupiter is coming up and it's closer than we thought. We need to figure that out before we crash into Jupiter and ruin the mission before it gets off the ground. And that's pretty much where the first one leaves off. Um, the Jupiter um, collapse was was imminent. You know, did they survive? Did they not watch the first movie? But at the end of the first movie, you're left wondering, where do we go from here? As we ha are, you know, after the events, the conclusion of the events of the first movie. Yeah. So, unfortunately, because the second movie called Part 2 is actually a prequel, we're no further along in the story than where we started. So that's one annoying bit for me. The second did thing you, that's in... Did you, did, you, did, you, did you think going into the second, you were going to get the answers where you were concluded with the first did you did you automatically no, assume that's where no. you're gonna go okay. um when i saw that the running time was 173 minutes or <laughs> seven minutes short of three hours long and i said well let me watch that trailer first because i need to make sure <laughs> that my 18 dollars is going exactly into where it needs to be for my three hours now the second movie of course being a full-on prequel uh, it, it takes you in the very near future, 2030 something, and then it catches you up to the events of the first movie. 2065. And, yeah, something like that. And yeah. then, of course, uh, it, it leaves you just before the first movie starts. So honestly, much like The Fast and the Furious, don't watch this one. I mean, oh, if you haven't seen the first one, watch this one first. Yeah, yeah. 
a lot of things are going to make a lot more sense. It's actually a good enough standalone movie of its own to start the franchise. Yeah. So I wonder if uh, director Frank Guo had a Star Wars kind of a moment where, listen, we don't know how long this is going to last. Let's start off with the hotness first and then move on and catch everybody up if they're interested later. Yeah. And it really felt that way where, unfortunately, for those that have already invested from 2019, well, dropping subtle hints and Easter eggs from in 2023 doesn't really matter to me because that was four years ago. Also, this movie's three hours long and it's a lot to take in. Yeah. Uh, visually, it it it's kind of leads me to my second point. It does too much. Yeah, let me let me jump in there real quick. I I, I agree. It's a uh, the film, and as a person who loves, uh, you know, when it comes to special effects, uh, cinematography, um, and even the music, when it comes down to the score, or soundtrack, or whatnot, I can appreciate Absolutely. the craft of the movie without acting. Um, you know, obviously, you want the plot to still do something, but sometimes you, there's movies like Dunkirk where the score is more intriguing than the plot to me. You know, um, but. I, I, yeah, this this film is a very lot to uh, consume. Could also be at points overstimulating because the first hour of the film alone, right there, you 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 get your money's worth visually, and even how they laying the foundation for what the 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 the, 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 the dilemma, right. the internal dilemma, but also like the global, worldly, humankind dilemma because you got. The UEG, the United Earth Government, where now everybody's on the same page saying we need to build these right. engines in this earth and move this earth. And then there's other little things too. And I, I, I'm going to make a couple of points I really want to get out the way really quick. Um, but b- before I get to that, I just want to say like that everybody understands what they need to do. The earth is going to be the destruction. I mean, the sun is going to be the destruction of the earth. And beyond them just moving the earth, they also got to detach from the moon, which is like they're, they're, this whole film is like, we have one issue, we got another issue, we got another issue. The issues do not stop. It's every given point, there's another big issue that they have to overcome. There's a lot of things going on. There's a there's a lot of tragedies. There is some very, you know, where, where the human stand-up moments, you know, that that moment of triumph. Um, you know, there's 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 other like sort of just that that homely feeling when when things are kind of centered around family and and a little bit of romance. There's totally some action there's a there's a scene in the beginning i thought was like really caught me off guard i wasn't expecting but there's totally some action in terms of just like some um uh gunfights and some hand-to-hand combat you know you're getting a little bit of everything but like the biggest thing i want to say with all this that's happening because when you're talking about uh when you're talking about films that deal with global catastrophe or disaster movies couple of movies come to mind here and this film definitely hits a lot of them there's a there's definitely a, a, a armageddon moment in this film that doesn't really go to armageddon way but it definitely sets up the armageddon moment um there is a uh, um geostorm a film that is not good because they tried to okay preach- okay good because i'm about to say yeah oh you no 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 not good they tried to preach a lot of science in that film and it didn't work but visually and what they wanted to kind of set up in terms of the world catastrophe you see moments of saying like there's an issue we need to solve. Cool. Fans get invested into it. instead of saying, here's all the math to all this. Here and then and then the fact and then the fact if you have any bit of common sense, she's like, but well, that doesn't make sense. Because yeah, when you talk about the moon happening to de- I mean the, the sun happening to detach from the moon, that's a real thing. And the fact that they say, like, this is what happens, and they didn't beat you over here with the science, you just kind of say, like, cool, okay, well, that's an issue. Let's fix it. And then the the more recent film where I, I think this really fi- finds a, a similarity to is Moonfall, where you talk about all of the the technology that's available. The the visuals are are, are damn near. I mean, this this is, I think supersedes that one. But like the visuals on Moonfall is really good. But like the visual comparisons and just uh, the different type of shots that they use. Like if you really enjoy Moonfall for just the visuals alone, I think this does it better. Um, but it still raises the stakes of saying like, there's a lot of sacrifice that's going on here. There's a lot of people that think that power is still going to be, you know, important when it comes down to these situations that folks just got to rally together and we got to get up out of here. So, you know, if you enjoy movies like that, um, I think that, like, without a doubt, you come into this one, you just put your seatbelt on, get your popcorn, get your get your your drink, probably chill on that because it's about a little bit three hours, 
and and just be ready for a, ro a roller coaster of so many different things happening that like it's a lot to take in but it's it's certainly worth a watch if it sounds like it's down your alley so tragedy heartbreak endless tech usage there's some uh yeah like again there's some um there's some uh sabotaging going on um and, and there's just mind-blowing moments that you just be like wow i want to spoil something but i won't but there's definitely moments where i'm like man i wonder if that will happen and then it happens and you're just like well holy hell this looks insane and you just can't help but to just be like all right fine all right <laughs> i got what i want i, I guess I, I i can't be beggy about the runtime now they're, they're giving you uh everything oh and one other thing i will say too uh, and maybe you're gonna pick up on this with everything that is happening because it, it is completely easy to lose track of certain things they do provide chapter scenes with major moments and milestones within the crisis so they'll say like a couple of hours to blah 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 happen or you know two months before blah 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 happens just so you can have a focus of saying like what's happening in this chapter so you can kind of self-contain and almost compartmentalize certain events till you get to the ultimate conclusion uh which leads you into the first film okay so that was a lot to unpack and like the movie is <laughs> a lot to unpack but i do <laughs> agree with a lot of it uh here's here's the point where i disagree uh where they would tell you that a certain cataclysmic event would happen in x number of hours days minutes and seconds it's 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 unfortunate because they're not just saying, well, we're gonna we're gonna sprinkle some seeds and foreshadow, foreshadow. No, they're literally telling you this is going to go down in approximately seven hours and fifteen minutes. Bridge and it's, and unfortunately for me, that's that kind of took me a little bit out of the story because it didn't give me a chance to figure out where we were. Instead of you know tripsing through the forest that is this movie, instead of you know, trying to figure it out, look at the situation, assess it, see what the science is. It just goes, oh, no, 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 no. Here's the answer. Be, be ready. Visually, five out of five, 10 out of 10, it doesn't look better than it does. Uh, I will say it's one of those movies that will that you're going to test your home theater system on when you yeah. when you upgrade. Yeah. Um, if you want to if you when you buy your next TV and you want to impress somebody with the latest technology, you're going to basically put any scene on in the first 40 minutes and go, this is what my TV does now. Be jealous. <laughs> that because It's a beautiful looking movie. It's a beautiful experience really throughout. And it doesn't necessarily feel like three hours. But understand this, it is three hours. Uh, could they have cut things? Could they have trimmed the fat somewhere? Of course they could have. Um, but understand that it is three hours. With that said, though, what I did really like about it is that it is the prequel that I wanted to get because you're left scratching your head at the end of the first movie with, why the hell did we get here? When do we know? Who knew it and why? And, and how do we get the world to do a thing? And this movie explains that. So if you really wanted to know the backstory, this is the backstory. Unfortunately, it doesn't leave you any further information going forward. So you're, everybody's just caught up now. And I hope that that means that there is something going on in the future where they continue the story further down the road, you know, at least out of the current solar system. Because, you know, we're everybody, the elephant in the room is the sun that's going to blow up in 100, in 100 years or 50 years from the moment where the Earth actually takes off and goes on a trajectory. The, the deal is, is that if you are an astrophysicist, you're going to shake your head, you're going to throw popcorn, <laughs> you're going to be mad at this movie. <laughs> I can definitely see some dudes and some bow ties and NASA going, nah, this is insane. But I do believe that this is the Fast and the Furious of this type of sci-fi. Um, it, it necessarily isn't anything that you want to think too much about. It, you're not going to teach astrophysics on this. This is not interstellar. Um, but it is as fun as you allow it to be. And as dumb as you think it is, because there are moments where you could absolutely nitpick this thing to, to the bones for three hours and go, this is insane. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of plausible elements that string along over the course of three hours where you go, nah, humans would do that. Um, yeah, I was just about to say, and I think yeah. that's a really big connecting factor for the viewers, because 
in numerous situations, you would say like, oh, I would do that. And then it actually go through with, I love when you can familiarize yourself with like the human nature element of a film. That's I, I, it's one of my biggest things I love about films is being able to like, yeah, I would do that. And right. then actually do it. You know, So there's one subplot that I'm not going to delve too further into, but it's kind of the, um, uh, the overarching thinking where uh, one group of, uh, you know, frame of mind, wants to go on with the Wandering Earth project, and that's to stripe thousands of booster rockets around the backside of the Earth and basically tugboat this thing across the galaxy. And then there is a competing theory for the what the remnants of humanity that wants to digitize humanity in the metaverse. That's dumb. <laughs> it's beyond dumb. And every time that it's brought up, it annoys me how dumb it is because if there is no infrastructure, there is no metaverse. Somebody <laughs> has to push the buttons. The buttons still have to work. And as we see later on in the movie, things that you think should exist don't because the earth has changed so dramatically. It's dumb. I wish that that wasn't the um, the other, the, the duality of humanity at that point where it's just like, no, we need to physically move the planet. No, we need to put it on. We need to put humanity on DVD. Okay. That's, yeah, well, I that's mean, and, and I, again, I think like because the, the film does expose so many different complex ideas, I think that like there's going to be somebody who makes an argument on every side of this, you know. And I also think uh, to that point that while you may not agree with it, there's sort of backup arguments to sort of reinforce why that idea is OK. And I, and I also think you can even go to a simpler level when you could go back to uh the 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 race to the moon uh you know when 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 the u.s and nasa was trying to be the first to land on the moon and how a lot of society was saying we're allocating way too much funds resources and money to win this space race that we're not going to win when we got a lot of other issues right here on earth and i think that like the beginning of the film draws sort of a updated to them modernized version of that argument of saying are we still going to go forward with this project because this moving mountains project which is the project that the united uh earth government is is going for there's a lot of folks that say yes this is the means of society uh to, to survival with society and humanity and then there's other folks saying eh nah uh-uh but then there's, there's still the big bad wolf inside the room that's the sun that's not waiting for anybody that's what i enjoy about the film because yeah. you do get and again, you're not preaching as much as I said, you're not preaching science. You're also not preaching politics as well, too. You have one side versus the other side. And you as the viewer just saying, like, listen, y'all better wrap this up. Because uh, if there's one thing I know, that sun is not waiting right now. <laughs> so and that, yeah. and I think that adds another added layer of suspense to this is knowing that time uh, is running out. But to your point that you made earlier, when you're going through these different chapters within the film, they by all means, they spoil it for you. They say, hey, this is happening in this chapter. Just be ready, you know? And and and, and even with you having the heads up of, of what's going to happen, the visuals still just really just breathtaking. There's, uh, there's a um, a moon elevator scene very early in this film that's amazing. Um, there are things blowing up, large things blowing up. That just looks insane. Um, even though the Earth uh, moving through the through the atmosphere, or, uh, excuse me, through space looks amazing. That's not a spoiler because, you know, you already know they're going there based on the first film. Um, but th there's so many different moments of just, you know, if you're if you're if you're a kid that just grew up loving space or just space exploration or any of this source. And you just start to think, like, what would it look like if da 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 da? I feel like this film definitely checks a lot of those boxes of like, yeah, that looks crazy so i don't know and as i said this, this film uh it has a lot of usage of text there's some drone stuff happening pretty early in this film <laughs> are um, there <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> um and, and with all of that too with all the technological aspects of it it still does come back home with humanity with tragedy with heartbreaks with love with success with victory with with failure uh with doubt um, all those sorts of different things are kind of going on in this. And 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 it's very, very easy to get confused with all of this. But still, after a while, this 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 train that appears that could derail somehow just continues to just keep getting back on track. Um, so it's a long film, but I I, I did not mind it at all. I I, I definitely well, 
which I, is I think wow. I don't know if it's if it's uh, broadcasted in IMAX in the U.S. Uh, it definitely did in China. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the opportunity to see it in the theater, uh, do so. If you yeah. have an opportunity to see it in a premium format, uh, make it your business to do so. Um, this thing needs to be seen on the biggest, brightest, clearest uh, screen with all the sounds and all the bells and whistles. Because at its core, uh, once you sift through all the science and all the political intrigue, um, and all the characters, uh, it is a, a summer blockbuster like um, popcorn action flick it's too many times over. There are massive, uh, massive set pieces that just go off without a hitch. And you don't necessarily need to be immersed in the Chinese uh, culture or, or philosophy at all to understand that what humanity is doing at the time. And that's yeah. one thing that we haven't talked about that I do want to touch on. Uh, yes, uh, Andy Lau is the star of the movie. He's one of the reasons why I saw it. Love Andy Lau for a long time. Um, but it's really an, a multiracial, international cast of there's so many different languages, so many different people from appearing from out of out of nowhere, everywhere, and it really does add to the scope and the immersion of this being a planet wide, worldwide event. Uh, you know, and most of them. And this is kind of the the, the you know the get you got you of the movie where the Chinese people spoke Chinese as they should. A lot of the Americans spoke American, uh, spoke English. Uh, the British had an accent. There were some Australian Rus guys and Mexicans Russia. speaking Spanish and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. Uh, a Russian guy was a really big uh, piece. Uh, a mm -hmm. French, guy, a couple French guys, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there would be people speaking English, and the dialogue didn't match the words. Okay. Can I can I say before you even talk about that uh, because you know dubbing and subbing is, is always going to be an issue, but it, it was it, odd to show what they dubbed though. For for sure, I I I I want to say before you even mention that in terms of because that's like a production thing. I got to say like it it absolutely warms my heart that everyone was able to speak their native language and across the board everybody understood each other. That right. was like a right. glimmer into the future that like a society I want to be a part of where the world had to band together. All of these different nations came together. Everyone spoke their native language, and every, and it was not a translator in the room or like a, a yeah, it's very, yeah. very, very, yeah, very. Yeah. I, love, I mean, there I were a that. lot of like little things, quirks to that piece. Like, yeah, you know, one dude had a seven G phone when he had service, <laughs> um, and then you know another guy had uh, everybody had an instant translator in their ear, uh, and that came into play where if, hey, the transmitter broke, I can't understand you. Um, however. However, because it's technology, you could say, why does this thing work and this thing don't work? And then that, so that kind of took me out of it too, because like, well, everybody's communications work, but they still needed to do an, uh, you know, a major plot point involved with the <laughs> internet. And I'm like, well, how are they relaying any communication to anybody? How does the AI suddenly work? I think all of I these think... things need to talk to each other, but then all of a sudden we need to go and have this major third act plot point involved with the internet. Make it make sense. And also, if dude's rocking a 7G phone, why are we trying to do, you know, the major plot point of world on the Internet? I'm just saying, you know, for all of the advances that they do, it is kind of like for all of the planning and preparation. Because, again, nobody half assed this. This is a worldwide, global, multinational, everybody, every government involved in the world uh, event. And we still have like, oops, somebody forgot to flip a switch in Beijing. <laughs> why is bob in, in charge of the switch that's going to save the earth also <laughs> and you know what shout out to dallas virginia yeah yeah, yeah. that's right Be, being a world landmark it was a worldwide event <laughs> a worldwide global event yeah they were and they, they, cities, and they said dallas i was they like said dallas. dallas and i'm like <laughs> What? Yeah, not Washington D.C., not Tyson's. If, if not, FCB, no, Dallas. They said we I, need I, Beijing I, online, we need Paris Dallas. online, and we need <laughs> Dallas. And I promise you, if you're not from the D.C. area, you do not know or care what I'm talking about. But it is an absolutely small mom and pop. Uh, buy your, buy your property now. Miles outside of D.C. near the airport. <laughs> And it, it it means nothing to nobody except if you play League of Legends because all of their servers are out there. <laughs> but, but the bottom line is it's a major technological hub um, for a lot of the East Coast Internet. And it's so big that the Chinese said, nah, 
the earth runs through Dallas. Yeah, I love that too because this is also tells you like a lot of these, a lot of these things. Although there wasn't again preaching the science and all that, it's things right. were thought out to to to, to but, say that you could easily say just Washington D.C. or yeah. New York. You just say New York. New York. <laughs> Everything's New York. Yeah, but also Absolutely. that is that is a thing too, and I just want to applaud the uh, the directors and the production crew for the scope and scale. They were they were absolutely on site in New York at the UN building, uh, you know, Forty Second and First Avenue. I've been on that park where they had these conversations in the movie. That's real, um, and they were definitely there in Beijing, you know, on site. Obviously, it's a Chinese movie, but you know, this thing was an international spectacle as it should have been, as it is the Wandering Earth. And they really didn't shy away from that. This wasn't a China-centric movie in the sense that, like, yes, the Chinese delegation spearheaded the operation and, and got a lot of, did a lot of the political heavy lifting between the Chinese and Americans. Well, two biggest superpowers in the world might have that stroke to do that in a, in a real-world way. So it wasn't forced because it was a Chinese movie. It wasn't like that Matt Damon movie that was uh, bankrolled by a Chinese company where it's like, we're just going to throw some hot Chinese actors in there, even though it's a Matt Damon movie. Oh, it's no, a great everything role. that they did strategically made sense as far mm -hmm. as the international placement and, and, and a lot of that stuff. And it makes sense because they want to market this thing to the world. You know, yeah. the Russians had a big part in this. The, uh, the, the Brazilians had a bigger, a smaller part in this. The yeah. French had a smaller part in this. So we're over here fawning over the fact that they know where the Dallas, Virginia exists. So <laughs> it really, really felt like a worldwide effort. And I think that that is something that's going to go um, you know, that's going to fall by the wayside, but I really want to point that out and commend that effort. But also I want to say that, yes, as heavy as it is to lift the earth, unfortunately, the script does not have uh, the, the muscle to continue it on. And it does, it, it's not as, as filling as it should be. And of course, the nature of the story, if you've seen the first one, doesn't progress the overall story. So for me, as much as I did like some things and didn't like some things, uh, we can talk final verd verdict in a minute, but I, I thought that it was some, some commendable efforts uh, for what they did really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for, again, for me, I think for the visual uh, spectacle that it was, I, I really enjoyed this film. Um, it, 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 it completely connects the dots from... Uh, from the second one to the first one, which becomes first to second, um, and, and get you prepared for wanting more. Where do right. we go with the third one here? And I think that whatever bit of confusion or, um, or, or 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 little plot holes that you may have had in the first film, I think the second film absolutely clears it up. I also yeah. want to mention too, because uh, you know you know you haven't said it, but like this 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 feels like a big film, big blockbuster. Uh, you know, uh, summer summer popcorn flick action movie. Um, it, it 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 does follow the same tropes that it deserves to be in that because yes, it has a mid credit scene <laughs> just to give you a little bit more. As if you needed more in this three hour film, there's a mid credit scene. So like when you talk about the big juggernauts, like in terms of like the Marvel movies and and Avatar whatnot. I mean, I think this film makes a makes an argument for like in terms of production and in terms of feel that it deserves to be to be in that category. It may not make that much money, it may not have that much popularity behind it, but it's sure as hell gonna feel like it. If you somehow wandered into this pun intended, if you wandered into this to, to the, a theater and just sat down and watched this, you're not gonna get up. You're absolutely gonna be intrigued. Like, what am I watching? And I definitely gonna consume all of it because they're gonna give you a lot. And by all means. As, as much as you talk about, you know, issues being with the plot, throw the plot out the window. Sit back and just be prepared for one turn to the left, one turn to the right, hitting the Nas button, jumping from building to building. Yes, folks. Fast and the Furious in space. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're willing to do that, you know, I commend you. But for something that's nearly three hours of substance, I can't <laughs> just say that, you know, you can turn your brain off for three hours. Yeah. You know, that that's not uh, that, that, ain't, that ain't for me, especially since the thing is is heavily seated in technology and uh -huh. logistics and, mm -hmm. and a bunch of other real world things. Um, I, 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 and again, I think that that's why I, I, I enjoy the film, because I think the first hour of the film absolutely lays down the foundation to keep you invested into the film. But when you go from chapter to chapter, some of these chapters stuck. And landed for me some of them didn't some of them were just right. like huh okay well i, I guess right. like you talked about the internet thing. i'm not gonna bring up anything specific but you talk about that internet portion of the film and i was just like this is not working for me yeah this is dumb 
But damn if it ain't some of the most coolest visuals underwater and in space. As a matter of fact, this film does take you on. It takes you on Earth, on land, in the air, in space, <laughs> on the moon, underwater. You hit yeah, everywhere that whatever you need to go. Uh, yeah. they, they go there. <laughs> so, you know, and that and that's kind of where it's like, you know, uh, this chapter was very, uh, uh, you know, this chapter was really, uh, really well executed. This chapter was kind of like, okay, fine. Right. But yeah, like uh, I mentioned, there is a mid-credit scene, so you definitely want to uh, stick around for that. Um, and I and I think this mid-credit scene um, is vastly important to uh, some things that you may have been wondering earlier in this film, but certainly in the first film, because it, it, it clears it up. It's much needed, even though I'm thinking, like, why do I need a mid-credit after all this time? But it works. And it does leave the intrigue of, well, yeah. what can you, what will you do next? Because it's, it's absolutely going to... There has to be a third one, as you've mentioned. Uh, yeah, they, that third one is coming. Be, they need to wrap this up. Um, yeah, you know, at least, at least get us out of the solar system for something. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it is interesting. Um, I did, and I did enjoy it enough to recommend it. And I would say that it is playing, and I'm, because I'm looking at the um, list of theaters that it's playing in, and it's playing in most major uh, markets around the country. So if you're out there in the middle of Kansas, you got a several hundred mile drive to, uh, to do. But if you're, you know, I saw it here in theaters in this area in D.C., but Seattle, uh, Raleigh, Durham, the Los Angeles, Miami, New York, Atlanta, and so on, uh, you can definitely, Chicago, uh, it is playing in the major markets. If you, um, uh, wellgousa.com, you uh, click on The Wandering Earth, and they have a list of theaters if you put in your zip code to see where it is playing near you. And if you live in a top 20 market, more than likely it's playing somewhere near you. Um, in this area, we got five theaters. In New York, they got about you know four or five theaters. In Atlanta, they got three. So it's definitely out there. And it made a ton of money in China for Chinese New Year. Um, uh, made a decent amount of money here. I'm hearing seventy million dollars in China first day, which is uh, which is pretty big. So it is um, it is interesting. And 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 I think if I'm reading this right, it's actually playing in IMAX in a few sub very exclusive markets in the U.S. So. Uh, yeah, see it on the best screen you got, uh, because this is one of those movies that deserve it, uh, deserve so. This is not something that you're going to want to wait for to watch at home. Um, you know, see it in the theaters with all the big bells and whistles. And if you do feel that the home experience is just as good enough as seeing it on the biggest screen you got, then invite us over. Let us be the judge, <laughs> uh, because we need to experience that with you. But this is definitely a popcorn flick for the movies, despite its length, despite its flaws. Um, it is, I still think that it's good enough to be good enough to be uh, recommended. So I'm, I'm ready for part three. Right on, right on. Well, folks, get out in the theaters. Check out The Wandering Earth 2, available now. As Jamal mentioned, you can go to willgousa.com, um, and, and The Wandering Earth 2 is right there on the front page. You can check out uh, uh, local uh, theaters and, and times to get your tickets. I mean, once you do, folks, come back here, jump in the comments, let us know your thoughts about this film. And as always, stick around here at Big O Build Media for more reviews very soon.